This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about why a lawyer paying for clients will or should be always convicted and why this one was convicted. Because an experienced lawyer claiming ignorance of the law is no defense and using a photocopy service to act as a pass-through to pay a capper, that is a person who for a fee brings clients to a lawyer, is something, although unusual, still illegal. Robert Irving Slater was a practicing workers' compensation attorney when he entered into the agreement with the owner of USA Photocopy, who paid a third party to perform intake interviews with clients of the defendant's practice, saving a significant amount of the lawyer's own employees' time and money. In exchange, defendant used USA Photocopy services during all workers' compensation proceedings on those cases. Now, the law in California or anywhere else prohibits referring workers' compensation clients for remuneration. Defendant was ultimately convicted of conspiracy, submitting false and fraudulent claims against insurers and 21 counts of insurance fraud. He was sentenced to probation for two years in a case called The People versus Robert Irving Slater, a July 17, 2023 decision of the California Court of Appeal, and for some reason appealed his conviction. USA Photocopy provided attorney services, including photocopying and sending subpoenas for records for workers' compensation cases. The company would then bill insurance carriers for its services. Peter Ayala worked as a legal investigator performing intake services. Ayala's role was to meet with the potential workers' compensation client to fill out the intake referral and also get the retainer signed for the claim, making uh, the person a client of the lawyer, Mr. Slater. Ayala was told by the lawyer to send an invoice for his services every two weeks to USA Photocopy, which paid him for his services. Ayala had done similar work in the past for approximately 13 attorneys, and this was the first time he would be paid by a party other than an attorney. Over the six years his relationship with USA Photocopy and defendant lasted, Ayala estimated he performed intake services for about 2,000 clients for the defendant, and USA Photocopy was the only copy service used for those clients. Ayala did not perform any service for USA Photocopy other than the service he performed Mr. Slater, the lawyer defendant. By so doing, an insurance company who paid USA Photocopy was really paying Mr. Ayala to get business for Mr. Slater. As the injured worker's attorney, defendant Slater would authorize all subpoenas that were issued and each entity would respond to the subpoena with records or by stating they had no responsive records, USA Photocopy would separately bill the cost for each subpoena to the workers' compensation insurance carrier, regardless of whether the subpoena resulted in production of documents. As a result, at trial, the defendant was convicted of conspiracy, submitting a false and fraudulent claim, and 21 counts of insurance fraud based on concealing or failing to disclose information that affected a person's right to the insurance benefit. The jury convicted the defendant on all 23 counts. The jury also found the enhancement regarding the pattern of fraudulent conduct true. The court sentenced the defendant to serve a total of 183 days, with 182 of those days suspended on the successful completion of two years of supervised probation. Six months of the probation term was to be served with an ankle bracelet. 
The court also ordered the defendant to pay $356,175.24 in victim restitution in addition to statutory fines and fees. In reviewing the sufficiency of the evidence to support a conviction, the Court of Appeal applied the test whether substantial evidence of credible and solid value supported the jury's conclusion. Appellate courts simply consider whether any rational trier of fact would have found the essential elements of the charged offenses beyond a reasonable doubt. The standard of review is the same even when the case relies on circumstantial evidence and the appellate court must accept logical inferences that the jury might have drawn from the evidence. To prove defendant guilty of conspiracy and insurance fraud, the prosecution was required to prove that the defendant conspired to refer clients for compensation in violation of a statute. The defendant's only argument was that the evidence did not support that he knew the referral scheme at issue in this case was a crime. Based on the defendant's level of knowledge and experience, he'd been a lawyer for more than 20 years, the jury could infer, and apparently did infer, that the defendant knew the laws involving what kinds of referrals were lawful and which ones were not in the context of workers' compensation law. A defendant cannot remain willfully ignorant and then claim a lack of knowledge about the specific law he was violating as a defense to a specific intent requirement. Further, the very oddness of the scheme involved here where Ayala was paid by USA Photocopy rather than by the defendant himself, a type of scheme that experienced workers' compensation attorney and retired judge Hernandez had never heard of suggested that something was not above board. The jury was entitled to infer from the oddity of the scheme that the defendant, as an experienced attorney, was aware it was illegal and therefore was able to convince insurers to pay the illegal fee to Mr. Ayala through the photocopy company. The fact that there was a lack of a written agreement, something a reasonable jury might consider routine for a lawyer, also suggested knowledge of illegality. Taken together and given the substantial evidence standard, the evidence was su sufficient for a reasonable jury to infer that the defendant was aware that the referral scheme violated the law. In my opinion, Slater, an experienced lawyer, should have known, and the jury found he did, that the scheme with the photocopy service and Mr. Ayala was an attempt to hide capping, a crime causing insurers to pay for the illegal referrals to a lawyer of new clients, a crime in California and in most states. He received a kind sentence with no jail time or maybe one day in jail, and payment of restitution. If he doesn't pay, he will go to jail. Creativity, however, in hiding the scheme did not work, and his conviction properly stands. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. You can subscribe to the blog and you will receive notice of every blog post, usually five a week, sometimes six, and you'll have access to the more than 4,550 blog posts. You can also subscribe to the videos on rumble.com and youtube.com, and if you do, I'd appreciate you click on, on the thumbs up button on rumble or the like button on YouTube. And if you're really interested in learning more about insurance, insurance law, insurance claims, and insurance fraud, please consider subscribing to my Substack publications or my Locals community. Thank you for your attention.